hopeful. Just a heightened level of anxiety, uh, of pressure, uh, tension. The matter is to count two, third degree murder, perpetrating an eminently dangerous act, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021, at 1.45 p.m. We needed this today. Bless those that made this prosecution something they couldn't deny. Bless those policemen that got on the stand and uh, What we learned is that there's just that much hope left in the American criminal justice system. I would not call today's verdict justice, however, because justice implies true restoration. But it is accountability, which is the first step towards justice. We're adjourned. After three weeks and 45 witnesses, the jury took 10 hours over two days to come to guilty verdicts in the trial of Derek Chauvin. Good morning. Thanks for being here. I'm Eric Connard. And I'm Nettie Irampour. You can just feel that emotion uh, when that verdict came down. And Skylar Henry in Minneapolis has reaction now from George Floyd's family and the community. Committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. Derek Chauvin showed no reaction as the judge read all three guilty verdicts. Find the defendant guilty. The jury convicted the former Minneapolis police officer of second degree murder, third degree murder, and manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. Find the defendant guilty. <laughs> Floyd's family and attorney celebrated the news. It's been a long journey. Today, we are able to breathe again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Prosecutor Jerry Blackwell. This verdict does give a message to his family that he was somebody, that his life mattered. Thousands of people were here in downtown Minneapolis cheering when that guilty verdict was read. Some of the people that we spoke with say that now they hope a better conversation can come about how to better improve the relationship between law enforcement and the community. This is the start, definitely. I just thank God for Minnesota for the truth. The judge is expected to sentence Chauvin in about eight weeks. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Minneapolis. And as Skyler mentioned, attention is now shifting to Chauvin's sentencing. Right, so many people want to know what happens next. Well, under Minnesota state guidelines, second degree murder carries a maximum sentence of 40 years. Third degree murder, a maximum sentence of 25 years. And second degree manslaughter, a maximum of 10 years. The judge will consider mitigating factors that could lower the sentence, such as the fact that Chauvin has no previous criminal record. But the judge could also consider aggravating factors. For example, the fact that a nine-year-old child was a witness. Coming up at 6.30, we're going to talk live with an attorney to take a closer look at what's next. And this is right here in San Diego. Many people opening up about the verdict. And we heard from some people who say the fight for racial equality is far from over, even with what the jury decided. Continuing our coverage, News 8's Chris Grow live at Waterfront Park with this part of the story. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Yes, this was hardly a celebration. When you listen to what some of our interviews with these activists uh, spoke about last night, essentially what they're saying is that this is still a push for uh, racial equality and also against police brutality, something that they are not giving up on anytime soon. It's just to remind people that we're still here, you know, and that we're still going to fight to convict more of the, of the police officers that contributed to his death and to other deaths of black people. 
and this battle for them long from over. But we did see that rally last night as police escorted their group through downtown. We could see them carrying those signs, making sure their voices were heard loud and clear, chanting the name George Floyd and uh, many others. Now the sentiment amongst the group was what they wanted to do is to essentially create a community, a community of one, but to stay focused on what's ahead in the fight against police brutality and racial injustice. We were told this fight won't stop unless there is more police reform in places like San Diego, but also across the country. Reform meant to prevent killings from like George Floyd's from happening again. We continue to hold our public officials accountable. Uh, we go, we show up at city halls, we start write petitions, we donate, we volunteer. Um, there's, there's so much you can do, and there's so many opportunities to help this fight. So don't think that you know there's nothing for you to do because there is. Hey, you heard it's, it's not just about the rally there. It's about doing things throughout the year, throughout the days, in order to try to inch closer and closer towards their goal. I mean, we heard uh, the Minnesota AG again calling the verdict not essentially uh, justice, but accountability, which could be the first step towards justice, something again that we heard echoed from this group as well. Eric and Netta. All right, Chris Grow with that perspective. Thank you so much. Uh, Mayor Todd Gloria also spoke to San Diego police officers who were on duty. He talked to them over the radio, which was interesting, shortly after the verdicts were made public. With today's decision made, it's now time for all of us to come together to heal and to move forward. Please take care of yourself, of each other, and of the people of this great city. Be safe, everybody. And in a statement, Mayor Gloria said, quote, the jury has rightly called this case what it was, murder. Derek Chauvin's actions were an abuse of power and a disservice to the men and women who nobly protect and serve our communities. Just hours before the verdict was read in the Derek Chauvin trial, a 16-year-old girl in Ohio was shot and killed by police responding to a call of a potential stabbing. We do want to warn you what you're about to see is difficult to watch. Now, officers responded to an attempted stabbing call about 4.30 yesterday, and body camera video released shortly after shows an officer shooting the girl, uh, Makia Bryant, as she appears to try and stab two people with a knife. The teenager died at a hospital shortly after. Officials say the officer opened fire to protect the others at the scene. The police chief says the officer involved is being put on administrative leave, which is normal for these cases as the Bureau of Criminal Investigation looks into it. Be sure to stay with News 8 as we are staying on top of both of these developing stories. You can also follow us uh, for updates across our social media platforms as well as the News 8 app and CBS8.com. Let's turn now to our forecast. It is starting off a little gray, but still lovely. Yes, I, I, I mean, even with rain in San Diego County, yeah. you're still looking beautiful out there, right? Uh, 608 right now. We're still waiting for heavier accumulations to come through. Right now, it's been a misting, a very light drizzle in some spots. Satellite radar imagery has given us plenty in terms of cloud cover, and those clouds are significant. They're contributing to some fog in areas, uh, but for now, we are not seeing our radar imagery come through much in terms of precipitation. But as I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago, we have seen a couple spots on the map register at one one hundredth of an inch of accumulating rain. These, of course, are very light accumulations. We're expecting uh, more significant accumulating rain in the next several hours and really over the next 48 hours. I mean, this is going to be a longer stretch where we could run into just scattered showers at times. Things are going to lighten up by the afternoon and then again tomorrow morning we could run into a few additional one hundredths that'll uh, develop. Wind advisory in effect right now all through 10 p.m. Now this is only for your desert communities. These are not spots that are expected to see much in terms of rain, if anything. However, they could see some blowing dust in the mix as it is breezy out there across your mountains and deserts. Forecast for the day is going to bring us to the upper 50s and low 60s. It's going to be windier across your mountains and deserts, but cloudier and showery for most of our coastline and inland temperatures are going to rest in the low 60s across the coast.